The world has changed, your situation has changed, and at the same time, it hasn't. What are the most significant steps? You need that money from the IMF. Are we any closer to a disbursement? First of all, I'm very happy to see you again after one year, and uh, the world changed significantly. The situation in Europe changed significantly, and the situation in Ukraine changed significantly, because uh, for the last year, we implemented a huge package for the reform for the stabilization of banking system, for the stabilization of financial system, for the improvement and decisive step for the anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We launch re reform in energy and a lot of other things, and which is most important, that we implement all this reform under the state of poor and under the aggression from the side of Russian Federation. And uh, I'm very pleased that exactly today the European Parliament make a special resolution about the significant progress of reform in Ukraine and other countries. And during my meeting with Christine Lagarde from IMF, we really recognize how big part of the memorandum Ukraine is implemented, starting mm -hmm. from the tax reform, uh, social benefits reform, cutting uh, the budget deficit and the uh, new budget, which is a budget of the real development. President, you have just met with the IMF managing director and you came from that bilateral meeting <coughs> to speak to us. Did she say that she is ready to disperse the money, the next tranche, or are there outstanding issues? No, we reached the compromise for the all the uh, matter which is included in the memorandum and we make a joint statement that in the very near future we will uh, finalize. We don't need any new mission that okay. we will agree and we will finalize memorandum in the next tranche. We expect in the next tranche in February. February, what, early February, end of February, does that make I don't a difference? Give you, I don't go into more details, <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, if I say the near future, that would be right words. You also met, of course, with uh, Joe Biden here earlier this week. W what did you tell each other? I mean, today, to we, was have, it today? <laughs> we have a meeting starting yesterday, finishing today, and it lasts more than four hours. And we discussed, and of course, we concentrated on the security matters and on the Minsk implementation. We we confirmed that Ukraine implement a significant part of the Minsk agreement, everything which we promise. Unfortunately, we do not have any positive delivery from the Russian side, neither on the security matter, because the uh, yesterday, <coughs> yesterday we have uh, 43 shelling, today we have uh, 27 shelling. Yesterday, my country lost three soldiers, today two soldiers were killed, uh, which is completely unacceptable. Do you uh, plan to, to meet with uh, President Putin uh, to we, discuss this? We discuss it on the 30th of December in the format of Normandy by phone mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, but, and he, he promised that uh, on the security matter we demonstrate de-escalation. And this is completely under his control to stop uh, stop on to open the fire. And uh, today we just disclosed the information that special monitoring mission of the OEC only during the last week, 21 times were denied for access, both on the uncontrolled part of Ukrainian-Russian mm -hmm. border and on the places where on the Minsk agreement mm -hmm. they should store their weapons. This is unacceptable. But, so that nothing is happening. You're telling me that after four hours of meeting with Vice President Biden, there you cannot report any progress on reaching lasting peace in Donbass? No, we, uh, we confirm that Ukraine demonstrated progress. And we think that there is a key role of our partners in the European Union, all Euro 28 member states of European Union, and particularly participant of the Normandy Forum and Germany and France, and our transatlantic solidarity, because the role of the United States is also a key issue, key leader for, keep, for the de-escalation of the conflict and for the punishment of the Russian aggressor by using the mechanism of the sanction and the one and a half year sanction. But can you now, really be closer to peace? It takes two to tango. And if Russia doesn't participate, you, 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 you're not making any progress. Is that right? No, the sanction is introducing just because of the fact that Russia is not implementing the Minsk agreement, which is right. promised. The three main points, withdrawal of the whole foreign troops from Ukrainian yeah. territory, yeah. giving the control on the uncontrolled part of Ukrainian-Russian border, and the ceasefire, open the host uh, release the hostages mm -hmm. and cooperating with the special monitoring mission of the OEC. This is the main issue why the sanction was introduced, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. we do not have any positive mm -hmm. development.
government in this situation. That's why sanction is effective. Right. And those who has uh, doubts uh, that sanction is not working, let's see today rate of the Russian rubles. Combination of factors, sanction plus lower oil prices, bring Russian ruble to the 85. And this is the price, unfortunately, aggressive paid for the absolutely irres irresponsible action. What do you make of the U.S. trying to get closer to Russia to have uh, a common agreement on how to deal with Syria? Uh, look, the coordination of uh, American partners with uh, uh, many countries, including Russia and Syria, does not mean that Ukrainian matter is out of the agenda or not a, as a priority. And that was the message I received from the Vice President Biden, and right. I was happy with that. And Biden also mentioned the Ukrainian matter as one of the top priority here in Davos. But do you feel that you're getting a lot less attention than you were last year? No. Not at all? No. Because the, <clears throat> the security situation in Ukraine is closely connected to the security situation in the whole Europe and in the global security. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about the de-escalation of the Ukraine, we're talking about this, uh, the defense of the interest of the people who are living mm -hmm. in the whole European mm -hmm. member states. And that's why it's so important to stop Russia. Mm -hmm. That's why it is so, so important to de-escalate the conflict. And that's why it is so important to withdraw the troops and to keep the situation under control. Do you think the, uh, there's a direct link between the price of oil falling and therefore Russia's capacity to, to engage further? Uh, I doubt that there is a direct link. But the less money Russia could spend on the military expenditure, the better. Better for Russia, better for the neighbors, and better for the whole global security, no doubt. And you think that this will happen? I mean, if, again, oil touches 20, I know it's very difficult, but at what point, you know, does President Putin say, actually, I, I better rein in my defense spending? Look, uh, again, from my point of view, I think that the Russia should be a predictable uh, country. Uh, until now, nobody can predict what would be the development situation in Syria. Nobody can predict what would be the development situation right. in Ukraine. And that's why we should spend 5% of our GDP on our security and defense program, just to build up an effective armed forces, just to stop Russian aggression, mm -hmm. and not <coughs> uh, to make in harmful Russian unpredictability. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. with that situation, I think that the progress of Minsk progress of the uh, other program demand just two main important things for Ukraine. Point number one is a unity of European Union mm -hmm. and transatlantic solidarity with Ukraine. Which you say you have? I have now it and we do our best to keep it for, for further time. Mm -hmm. And second, and as effective program of the reform in Ukraine, mm -hmm. which is demonstrated success country. And also, I, me as a president of Ukraine, do my best to demonstrate the effective implementation of the reform. And I'm very happy today that we have today positive estimation from the European Union, European Parliament, International Monetary Fund, and our partners from the United States. President, you have also said that you're actually expecting a significant reshuffle of your government. Yeah. Why is that necessary? Because to make the program of the reform more effective. So are I, they too slow now, or do you, you, do you no, just we, want to, we, to crank we, up the volume? <laughs> we do our best to accelerate that, and okay. I think this is the only way how we can survive in this very difficult situation.